Hello everybody, Jordan Nelson here. I hope you're all doing well. I wanna put out a video. I know a lot of you might be cooped up at home during this time, so I figure now's a great time to invest in your wedding filmmaking or video creation where you're learning and practicing with your camera equipment, things like that. So I wanted to provide you with one quick focusing tip using autofocus, manual focus, something that's really helped me during wedding filmmaking to be able to nail that focus and do some more creative stuff. So I'm gonna be using the Sony a7 III, but I think this will also apply to whatever camera that you're using. You just may have to figure out uh, what buttons those are and how exactly it works. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the focusing tip that we're gonna talk about is knowing that you nailed manual focus without ever having to touch your lens or adjusting your actual manual focus ring because it can be hard, even if you have peaking setting on, to know that you've nailed that manual focus and that maybe you're not just a touch off, especially how quickly wedding days move and you're just trying to capture events. If you still want to get that manual focus and know that you've nailed it, you can actually use autofocus to your advantage. Especially with the Sony a7 III, I know that you can do this. With your other cameras, you might wanna do some research to make sure that you have this capability. Is that you can set your autofocus and then toggle a manual focus to lock it down. So that is a quick and easy way to know that you've nailed the focus without ever having to touch your manual focus ring. So, for example, right now we have a mason jar in the foreground and a mug in the background, and I wanna make sure that that mug is in focus. So right now I have my focus area as flexible spots. So I can move that around with, I have a little um, toggle here, or I can always touch the screen to change where my focus point is with the flexible focus but I wanna make sure that, that mug in the background is in focus. Cause let's say you want to reveal the couple from behind a tree. So let's say that mason jar is a tree and you want to kind of move around it. What you don't wanna have happen is the tree to be in focus at the beginning. And then when you're moving out from behind the tree, it's got to search using autofocus in order to find the couple. So what you want is to have that manual lockdown focus of the couple at the outset. Now you could always just use manual focus with your peaking setting to know that you've gotten it, but with the viewfinder, it can be hard to know that you've nailed it, especially if things are really, really quick and you're having to move very quickly. So instead, use manual focus so at my flexible spot, I know that that's in focus right there, and then I have a custom button that I have set. And I would suggest if your camera's custom buttons that you do this and put it in a place that's really easy and accessible, that I just toggle to manual focus. So as you can see over there at the left side of my screen, what's changing is that AFC, which means autofocus continuous, which means it's on autofocus. And then I press the button and now it says MF, manual focus. As you can see there, when I turn it to manual focus, little red lines appear. That shows what is in focus, what the camera is perceiving to be in focus. So now I know using autofocus that that mug is what's in focus and it's gonna be locked down. So if I, uh, move my focus point even over to here, it's not gonna do anything because I already have my manual focus set. Now to toggle it back, I just press that custom button again that toggles to autofocus, and now the mason jar will be in focus because I moved the flexible spot. So that is what I use during the wedding day. I I'm almost always on flexible spot, so I can put whatever I want in focus, using autofocus, which Sony a7 III's autofocus is really good. And then if I need to, I can just lock it down by pressing that custom button right there, really accessible. And I know that it's gonna stay in focus as long as I stay the correct distance away. Now, if I change my distance, of course, it's not gonna be in focus. So then I would want to change it back to autofocus and then toggle back and now we're good to go. I hope that was a helpful, really quick tip. If you need any clarification or have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. I'd love to help you out there as well or create another video that further explains some of the details or gets more into the menus of some things that you can do. But I want this to be a really quick tip, just something that you can look into and maybe that can help enhance how easy it is for you to get that focus because I know a lot of you have reached out asking how to figure out your focus because it seems to be all over the place for you. So that's, this is one thing that you can kind of research and see if your camera will support that and you can start practicing now because I know a lot of us are cooped up at home and now's a great time to really invest in your learning and maybe if there's any cancellations or postponements of weddings that you guys have currently, 
you can now continue to get better. And when we do have the green light to get started again, then you'll be that much more prepared. Speaking of investing, if you're a beginner, I do have the beginner's guide to wedding filmmaking linked down in the description below. You can go ahead and check that out, see if that'd be something that you're interested in, especially if we are gonna be cooped up at home, that would be another way to invest and grow and learn. And I hope it would be fruitful for you and your business as well. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Stay well. See y'all in the next video.